Look at yourself in the mirror and just say, you know what, my body does a lot for me and my body looks bloody good while doing it. There's nothing wrong with giving yourself more credit because you deserve to give yourself more credit. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop feeling guilty if you're missing these meals. Stop feeling guilty if your progress is taking a bit longer than you might like. There is no rush. You're dealing with plenty of things in life and fitness is only one aspect of it. Be kinder to yourself. Okay, we're in business today. I was actually meant to cover this video many, many moons ago. I say many moons ago, it's literally like two weeks ago. I, I didn't for some reason, I can't remember why. But then I was working through the video idea list and I was like, oh yes, I was meant to do that. So guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna do that. And what is that exactly? That's a, that's a fantastic question. So we're actually gonna look at the Linda Sons video where she speaks about eating over 100 grams of protein every day for six months, life-changing my workouts, meals, and transformation. A few people actually sent me this video, said, hi Harry, can you have a chat about this? Not so much Linda and her approach, but more the kind of discussion around protein and her thoughts and opinions as to why she's consuming more protein. There's more of like a nutritional slash like mental health video than it is a workout video video today and it's I think it's gonna be a great catalyst for conversation because I have many notes listed down in front of me so obviously before we crack on the video a few things need to be done if you decide at any point you like the video please let me know you like the video by liking the video 1300 likes is a goal so if we reach out the bloody splendid I would very much appreciate it if you haven't already please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week and if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video for comment question of the week please do drop it down in the comment section and I shall do so actually another thing I want to quickly mention last video the kind of like the battle of the home workouts thing that I was doing, well received. It seems like a lot of you actually really enjoyed that video. So that, that was a surprise and I'm glad you did. But let me know down below if you think I should turn it into a series where I maybe give my opinion on who might be better for certain things and who might be better for these things. The similar sort of structure, you know what I mean. But yeah, just let me know if you want it to be a series. I can certainly think about maybe uploading one of those once a month or something similar. Before we start with the video and chuck the headwear on, I just want to throw something out there. It's mainly for, for safety and for peace of mind, but I do want to throw out a very quick trigger warning because we will be discussing things along the lines of food, which could venture into the realm of disordered eating and maybe eating disorders. If you find anything I'm speaking about or anything of that nature upsetting or potentially triggering, please don't hesitate to click off the video. Again, I've said this many times before and I'll say it many times again. It's not worth sacrificing your happiness just to watch a video I've created. I'm really not that important. And the other thing is a disclaimer. I'm also not a qualified dietitian or anything along those lines. I'm merely giving my opinion as a qualified personal trainer. Hat. Yes, so it's not hat actually. Actually, it's something that's gonna be far more tolerable for my big head, although it does look spiky and painful. What a waste of time, you can't even see it. Is this? Do you know what I mean? It looks like an alien. Protein has turned into the go-to miraculous safe answer to all of our deepest, darkest desires. Protein, when considering muscle building, is arguably the most important macronutrient. Don't get me wrong, all macronutrients have a time and a place. When like solely considering the building of muscle, protein is often deemed to be the, the building block, the most important one. And obviously if you aren't aware, there are four macronutrients. Protein being one, which has four calories per gram. There's carbohydrates, which is another macronutrient, which also has four calories per gram. There's fat, which has nine calories per gram and technically alcohol is considered a macronutrient although it's not one we typically use when talking about working out macros and there is seven calories per gram. If you google how much protein should I eat the recommended daily allowance the RDA for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. The dietitians I spoke with and google said that the RDAs were created to prevent malnutrition. It's like the minimum amount you'd need to not get sick and maintain basic bodily functions. So not getting sick versus feeling strong thriving in your best is very quite different. Yeah the RDA so recommended daily allowance is a bit of an odd one because it's kind of as Linda said is deemed to be the the minimum that you should really consider consuming for basic health functions but essentially how much protein you consume if you were to track it which again you don't have to track your protein you don't have to track your macros and you don't have to track your calories I'm really stating that if you were to track it and were interested in tracking it and could do so in a manner that allows you to maintain a good relationship with food then I would say your protein intake really depends on your goals so I say for most people who are kind of keen on resistance training doesn't necessarily mean that your goal is purely hypertrophy but you're just keen to lift weights and resistance train i would typically say range is usually anywhere from 0.8 grams per pound of body weight all the way up to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight which is then kind of met in the middle with most people saying probably aim to consume about a gram per pound of body weight but again that is very much dependent on other factors as well so protein wasn't the answer or the cure but it was a part of the bigger picture ultimately i needed a new focus Strong, not smaller, mindful, not obsessive. I want to, I get.
get to, not I have to. Delicious, not just nutritious. Again, I, I always do appreciate Linda being honest with her, her goals and her focus, but I've had a few people comment this before and I'm starting to see a bit more myself, is that Linda seems like she almost changes her goal and changes her focus in every video I've watched of hers. And I am starting to see that kind of trend, which in fairness is completely fine, it's completely up to her, but it is quite interesting how that does seem to be quite a common occurrence. That every time I, I watch something and it's a different topic, maybe surrounding mental health or something food related, there's always a new shift in focus and maybe a new shift in goal. I have always thought that only athletes and humans that wanted bigger muscles <laughs> cared about macros and protein. But then Grace asked me, why do you train? And I said, I trained to feel good, to distress, have fun and feel strong. And she reminded me that if wanting to get stronger and lifting weights and working out is a part of my lifestyle and makes me happy, more protein is only gonna support all the things that I already love to do. I think that's actually a very common association. When you think about a high protein diet, you typically do think about people who are maybe really dedicated to sport or something along those lines without actually realizing that a higher protein diet can actually benefit a lot of people for many goals and you don't have to be a professional sports person to consume a high protein diet. And also I, I do believe again in a lot of cases that a lot of people probably don't consume as much protein as they probably should. And again that may be due to the reasons I've just previously mentioned. I just want to show you that we never need to give up any of the things we love in order to feel like our best selves. Your diet choices should never come at the expense of what you love to do or to eat or how you enjoy to live. I think that's actually a really good quote to I think it's really nice. Oftentimes we as humans, especially myself, if I'm being completely honest with you, do get far too wrapped up in just the, the kind of single thing in mind. And for me, in a lot of cases, that is food. Sometimes I sacrifice social events so I can get my food in. Sometimes I sacrifice making memories just to meet my meal requirements. And again, I'm fully aware that probably is a bit of a display of disordered eating. And I hold my hands up and say, you know, I, I admit it, I'm not perfect. I acknowledge that. But I do think that it, it, food, fitness, and anything that you choose to do is about enhancing your life. And if you're now not able to potentially interact with your friends, hang out with your family, do the things you want to do because food is a limiting factor for you because you feel like you might not eat enough protein you might do this you might do that then something needs to change and again I know that's easier said than done because a lot of people unfortunately and I know a lot of people watching this may be struggling with an eating disorder or disordered eating and again me saying something needs to change is irrelevant because it's not that easy especially when you are dealing with a mental health disorder or something similar I think it's more about just acknowledging that you are worth more than what you are eating your life is worth more than being controlled by food. You are worth more than what your scale weight tells you you are. You're worth more than what your eating habits tell you you are. Life is about enjoying it because at the end of the day, for, sadly, it is limited. It's not gonna last forever. I wanna get from A to B and have a really good time when I'm doing it. And I fully acknowledge my eating is likely disordered, but I'm gr gradually learning and slowly kind of getting familiar with being a bit uncomfortable stepping out of my routine. I think that's something maybe some people could benefit from doing, and I know it's hard because I'm struggling with it myself. If I miss a meal, I can make it up for it later. If you know what, if I miss a meal, it's not gonna prevent me from making progress. One blip is not gonna ruin all the progress you've made, and one blip is not gonna prevent you from reaching the end goal. One blip will probably not even slow down the process. Granted if blips become more frequent then sure it may slow down the process a bit but then you ask yourself is what's the rush are you desperate to get anywhere for any reason are you, are you against a time deadline is there a rush and if the answer is no personally I, I think I would probably rather take it a bit slower take a bit longer to get there but enjoy my life be a bit happier and be a bit arguably healthier along the journey there's nothing I love more than when people prioritize their health and well-being and confidence. It is great that Linda is obviously promoting the message of prioritizing health, well-being and confidence. I fully agree, I fully support it. But I, I do, unfortunately, due to the nature of a lot of her videos and kind of the opinions I've expressed before and the opinions that many of you have expressed before, I do often sadly find myself questioning, it's a great message to promote, but does Linda apply that same message to herself? Is Linda herself prioritizing those things? I feel like I have a better relationship with my body because I've just been taking care of it again. And I feel better when I know that, and I look better when I feel that way. Firstly, I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna upset some people. I've said it before, and I know some of you might actually smack me, is that I see peanut butter on screen, and I'm so like, Oof. I know I made the unpopular opinion about my thoughts on pizza saying I don't particularly like it that much, but I feel the same way about peanut butter. Honestly, uh, it's in the, especially in the world of bodybuilding, everyone's like, oh, peanut butter is saving grace. I'm thinking, oh, 
can't stand it. I really can't stand it. But if you love it, I'm all for it. But sometimes, even when I get the smell of it, I'm like, Bruh. I'm not sure about this. Your relationship with your body is a, is a big thing. And I, I do love it when I hear Linda say that she's improving her relationship with her body and hopefully her relationship with food as well. But again, I, due to what I've seen and kind of a lot of conflicting messages that Linda has put across, oftentimes I do find myself questioning how authentic it is. And does she really feel that way or is she saying that for the camera? Or maybe just to convince herself she feels a certain way. And I really hope that's not the case. I really hope that her relationship with herself is improving because ultimately I think this can apply to a lot of us. Our body is capable of doing amazing things, incredible things, unbelievable things. It allows us to do all the things we want to do in our life. It allows us to train, it allows us to eat. It allows us just to live a life that we want to live and hopefully a life that makes us happy. We give ourselves too much of a hard time. We look in the mirror and we say, you know what, I'm not happy with how I look today. My eating was a bit off yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good. I feel like I've never been to the gym before in my life. I feel a bit fluffy, maybe. I think that's a term I've heard used a few times. I feel a bit flat. I feel this, this, and this. It's all too easy to be so self-critical of ourselves, especially when you're surrounded by social media, which kind of thrives off people posting pictures of them looking their best, which is absolutely fine. But you've got to remember things like that. Social media is a highlight reel. And just because you don't look like your favorite Instagram model does in their photos, doesn't mean that you don't look fantastic just the way you do. I think a lot of us would probably benefit from just giving ourselves a bit more credit, giving our body a bit more credit for what it does for us, what it allows us to do. And also just remembering that despite what your mind may tell you at times, that you look fluffy, you look flat, you look this, this and that, doesn't necessarily mean that's true. Sometimes our mind lies to us. Sometimes our eyes lie to us. Sometimes we convince ourselves of things that aren't true. And kind of like Linda says, is when we when we think we look a certain way, we often feel that certain way as well. There's no harm in turning around to say, you know what, I look bloody great today. You know what, I look bloody great every day. Doesn't necessarily mean that you look exactly how you want to look in the future and you've met all your goals, but you should certainly be proud of the progress you're making and certainly acknowledge that you look fantastic, but that's not stopping you looking even better than you already do if you want to. But you also don't need to. Give yourself more credit. Look at yourself in the mirror and just say, you know what, my body does a lot for me and my body looks bloody good while doing it. There's nothing wrong with giving yourself more credit because you deserve to give yourself more credit. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop feeling guilty if you're missing these meals. Stop feeling guilty if your progress is taking a bit longer than you might like. There is no rush. You're dealing with plenty of things in life and fitness is only one aspect of it. Be kinder to yourself. I think there will always be a part of me that's like obsessed with that high intensity interval training high, but I never gave heavier weights a chance because diet culture convinced me at a young age that cardio was the way to go, burning more calories meant better workouts, and I blindly believed it all without even glancing towards all the benefits of weightlifting, like how it lowers your risk of injury, improves your heart health, bone health, energy levels, mobility, or how it literally just makes you feel like a badass. I know I, I do this a lot, but I do really believe in how beneficial resistance training can be for pretty much everybody. It doesn't matter if your goals are hypertrophy or anything, I do genuinely believe that resistance training can really enhance your life. And a lot of the kind of tips and tricks and opinions I kind of promote surrounding hypertrophy apply to resistance training as a whole, which is why I'm happy promoting them on my channel, because I fully acknowledge that not everybody is purely looking at building as much muscle as possible. That's not really the direction I'm trying to make my channel follow anyway, but I'm aware that a lot of the principles I'm applying and a lot of the principles I'm suggesting that you consider applying do apply to resistance training as a whole and not merely just optimizing the ability of muscle. Do you have to resistance train? Absolutely not because at the end of the day if you don't enjoy it then don't do it because obviously if it's not enhancing your life then is it something you need to invest into but it's certainly a consideration that if you if you are ever considering resistance training just give it a go. You may indeed love it and if you hate it at least you tried. Some of my favorite ways to sneak in some protein are pretty unoriginal, but I'll share them anyways. Extra egg whites to scrambled eggs and my protein oats. Finding your favorite protein powder, such a game changer. Like a scoop of protein powder into my oats, into my smoothie bowls, and my Greek yogurt, I swear just makes it taste better. It's all about moderation. Supplements can certainly be really beneficial when getting your protein intake a little bit higher, but again, they are there to supplement your diet. If you can get your protein through whole foods, that's probably gonna be better for you in most cases, but if you can't, supplements can certainly help bump up those numbers and there are certainly amazing things you can do to reach your protein intake like Linda said eggs you've got all sorts of things but also there are other considerations to, to make because not everybody consumes an animal-based diet a lot of you watching this channel may well follow a plant-based diet I spoke to Sarah about this because she herself is vegan and she gave me some tips and tricks and she essentially said tofu obviously a fantastic source of protein seitan is another fantastic source of protein I've probably pronounced that horrendously and I do apologize chickpeas are another great source lentils another great source soy mince is a great one also another consideration that came to my mind was pasta 
So although pasta is primarily a source of carbohydrates, it's also surprisingly quite high in protein considering it's predominantly a carbohydrate source. And obviously with the, the world we live in now, there are so many protein snacks everywhere you go. Evidence shows that it's actually the source of protein rather than the amount of protein that makes a difference for our health. And when it comes to like building muscle and everything, amount is actually very important as well, but so is source of protein. Because essentially when you're looking at protein, you're not just looking at protein, you're almost looking at like complete proteins as well. And essentially proteins that are made up of all the all the good bits and bobs like EAA, so essential amino acids, etc. etc. So to be honest, I would probably lean to more towards when let's say building muscle amount being more important than source, but flip it around in an ideal world, you would be able to reach your numbers, again if you are tracking your numbers and hitting your protein target, whilst also getting that protein from good sources of complete protein. Amount is important, but source is also very important too. Uh, and now we kind of covered Linda's video, I did want to cover just very quickly two protein myths that I've been hearing around the industry for years and maybe throw a bit of debunking out there for a bit of that educational good stuff at the end of this video. Protein myth number one, which is something I used to hear many, many moons ago. If you don't work out, a high protein diet will, for lack of a better term, make you fat, which is what they used to say to me at school. That's also not true. Calories in versus calories out. What your macronutrient split is, so carbs, proteins, fats, will not really play a massive role on weight gain or weight loss. The biggest driving factor when considering weight gain and weight loss is going to be calories. Whether you work out or not, a high protein diet is not going to be bad for you in, in the grand scheme of things for most people. And consuming a lot of protein will not make you gain loads of weight. But eating in a calorie surplus, so eating more calories than you expend, will likely lead to you gaining weight. Number two, this is a big one. I know some of you may have even commented already, or may be questioning it right now, is a high protein diet is bad for your kidneys. Yeah, again, this is largely untrue. The only real research I kind of really saw supporting this was in people who had a family history of kidney problems. But the majority of research I've seen discussing this, provided you are healthy and without family history of kidney issues, then no, a high protein diet will not ruin your kidneys. But yeah, that is it. That is the video. Before we obviously finish the video, I'm going to very quickly crack on with comment question of the week. What do you think of glute workouts that target the glutes and don't grow the legs? Realistic or nah? At the end of the day, that is largely based on your goals. That is very much dependent on what you want to achieve. If you purely want to try and build your glutes without worrying about your quads and your hamstrings due to your aesthetic desires perhaps, then you're, it's your body, your choice. When looking at really optimizing glute development, a lot of great glute movements will typically involve other muscles. And largely, especially if you're looking at working the glutes in their lengthened position, you're likely gonna to have to consider implementing movements that do work muscles external to just the glutes. So sure, you can only train the glutes if you want to whilst minimizing other muscle involvement, but if you're looking at optimizing glute development, you probably do need to consider movements that will bring in other muscles to quite a degree. But again, like I said, it's your body, your choice. That is it, that is a video. Like I said at the start of the video, if you perhaps tolerated the video, or maybe even bought one liked the video, please let me know by liking the video. 1300 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal, so if I could reach that, that'd be bloody splendid. I would very much appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do consider tickling the red button down below to subscribe to the channel, and maybe the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my headwear that is out of camera, but is still making noise while I wobble around. And thank you for tolerating the video.